Hello everyone, and welcome to Fun To Be Free. Today's journey brings us to Disney's Pop Century Resort. To be on the move, over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Coming up next. Hey Explorers, John with Fun To Be Free, inviting you to follow me as we discover fun together. Let's go. We're here at Disney's Pop Century Resort. This is where we're gonna start our excursion and we're gonna end up near Echo Lake at Disney's Hollywood Studios, where you could play a role in a popular TV show Stay tuned because we're going to discover Disney MGM Studios' evolution of previous television-based attractions. From records to 8-track tapes and cassettes to CDs, Disney's Pop Century Resort salutes the timeless music, movies, and toys that captivated the world through the decades. Take a spin back in time at this resort hotel where guests of all ages can groove to pop culture with past catchphrases and experience the unforgettable fads of the 1950s through the 1990s all over again. Pop Century's Classic Years is a collection of guest rooms that features groups of buildings with specific time periods consisting of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, all with bright colored themed buildings. Let's proceed through these double sets of double automatic doors into the lobby. We're now inside Classic Hall. There's the reception area and the front desk for check-in. Walk down memory lane near the wall-mounted shadow boxes, reflecting fads, fashion, music, television, toys, trends, and trinkets from the past decades. This iconic monument of yesteryear is located across from the reception area. During the 1950s, Disneyland opened and television gave us the Mickey Mouse Club. Then, Disney MGM Studios presented an opening day attraction that immersed guests into some of their favorite nostalgic TV shows. Stick around and find out more soon. Check out this vintage television set where junior explorers could watch popular Disney programming while their parents check in. The Fast Forward Arcade is also located inside Classic Hall. Located near the arcade is Everything Pop, shopping and dining. This is where you can shop for Disney and hotel logo merchandise at this far out gift shop. That's a blast from the past. Here's a quick look at the interior dining area. Dining at Disney's Pop Century Resort is much more than just a fad, thanks to a wide-ranging selection of delicious dining choices. 
grab a bite from a variety of seven quick service food stations, ranging from hearty comfort food and healthy fare to grab and go options. Let's take a look at the delectable menu choices. Everything Pop, Shopping and Dining offers souvenir specialties, along with burgers and chicken, and entrees, and also sandwiches. In addition, they have pizza and pasta, salads, plant-based items, kids' Disney check meals, kids' meals, sides, Mickey Mouse celebration cake, and additional desserts. Over in this direction is the most important appliance in the food court, the microwave oven. Let's proceed back outside and walk down this pathway. Welcome to the fabulous 50s, Disney style. Head over to the various 1950s area buildings to scan some of your favorite 45 titles on the records decorating the railings and check out the transistor radios. Experience the thrilling adventures of the larger than life 23 foot tall lady, a lovingly pampered cocker spaniel and the 30 foot tall tramp a free-willing mutt with a heart of gold from Walt Disney's 1955 animated film, Lady and the Tramp. There's also the giant-sized tabletop jukebox that's 40 foot tall. Take a gander at those 65 foot tall bowling pins. There are nine of them that serve as the stairwells to the 50s buildings. The 10th bowling pin is the pool. The bowling pool is where resort guests can take the pop culture plunge and it's themed to a massive bowling alley, complete with ball racks, guide arrows, and a wooden paneled pool deck area. The laundry building next to the pool is disguised as a giant bowling shoe locker. We're in the 60s, man. The bright yellow buildings of the 1960s section are decorated with peace signs, day glow flowers, and icons of toys and movies from the decade including Play-Doh, The Jungle Book, and the 37-foot-tall Duncan Imperial Yo-Yo Tops. There's Baloo, the 35-foot-tall fun-loving and good-natured bear who becomes the best friend of a man-cub, the 19-foot-tall Mowgli from the 1967 animated feature film, The Jungle Book. Immerse yourself in the spirit of the 1960s at the sprawling, hippy-dippy pool. It's the centerpiece of this area, which features flower-shaped water jets. For the junior explorers, a kiddie pool area with a pop jet water fountain is located nearby. There's surfing Goofy, next to his classic Corvette. Time to boogie down in the 1970s. The 1970s area is a great place to explore with sporting icons like the big wheel that has an 18 foot diameter front wheel, the 30 foot tall Mickey Mouse telephone, and a humongous foosball table with table soccer players that are each 12 feet tall. The buildings themselves display large mood rings and platform shoes, while the stairwells are encased in massive eight track tapes. If you've got some time on your hands, head to one of the twister game boards that have been permanently tiled into the ground in the courtyard. There's also a spinner board mounted so that you'll always know whether it's left hand on yellow or right foot on blue. Oh, and look, there's Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head saying hello. This is so totally cool. We traveled back in time to the 1980s. What does a Rubik's Cube with surfaces of 23 square feet, a 23 foot tall Roger Rabbit, and a massive 33 foot tall Sony Sports Walkman with matching 37 foot wide headphones have in common? They're all highlighted here in Pop Century's 1980s tribute section. 
Once you've seen all of your favorite toys and movie characters from this time period, check out the giant Pac-Man game happening on the exterior guest room balconies. Grab your vintage electronics and dial up into the 1990s. Giant CDs hang on the railings here, and you won't ever forget Walt Disney World's phone number. It's plastered on the screens of the massive cell phone stairwells. A four-story high laptop computer with a screen that's 28 feet wide creates the theme, and a huge keyboard sits across from the pool, perfect for playing. The computer pool is the real draw in this guest area. Next to the pool is the larger-than-life hard drive that serves as the laundry facilities and someone's left out a few floppy disks with games just in case you get bored. Located between Disney's Art of Animation and Pop Century Resorts is the shimmering water of Hourglass Lake. The lake widens at each end and narrows in the middle, allowing for a walkway that connects the two resorts. As a result, this walkway has provided the ideal location for the Disney Skyliner Station where you can soar to new heights and take to the skies. Hop aboard the Disney Skyliner. This gondola system offers a bird's eye view of the Walt Disney World Resort as it whisks you and your family away to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now we'll head past security screening over to the vacation planning ticket booths. Welcome to Disney's Hollywood Studios, where you'll take center stage and be the star of your very own adventure. We'll use the touch point at the guest entrance to gain access to the theme park. Let's head down Hollywood Boulevard over to Echo Lake, off to an interactive dining experience. We made it to the 50s Primetime Cafe. Bring your appetite and sense of humor to the 50s Primetime Cafe. This restaurant offers classic American comfort food, 1950s kitsch, and decor straight from mom's kitchen. It's a good old fashioned family gathering that takes you back to a bygone era that's also an interactive dining experience with a twist. Servers are all one big happy family. With names like Aunt Elaine and Cousin Jeff, they'll keep you on your toes, urging patrons to eat all their vegetables and keep their elbows off the table, or else you'll be teased. The wait for your table begins in the living room, while old favorites are playing on the TV, while you're surrounded by unique 50s knickknacks. Black and white televisions are placed throughout the restaurant, broadcasting clips from 1950s sitcoms along with the original Mickey Mouse Club. If you're lucky, grab a TV table, which has a television set at the end of the dining table for easier TV dining. Let's travel back to the 50s to see the mouth-watering menu selections. 50s Primetime Cafe offers lunch and dinner entrees like Aunt Liz's Golden Fried Chicken, 
a sampling of mom's favorite recipes, cousin Megan's traditional meatloaf, mom's old fashioned pot roast, Caesar salad with chicken, and Caesar salad with salmon. Let's walk around Echo Lake over to the building that was previously named Superstar Theater. We've arrived at our feature presentation. Superstar Television opened at Disney MGM Studios on May 1st, 1989 and was presented by Sony. This was the first television themed attraction to occupy the Superstar Theater building. Superstar Television was a live show that allowed guests to go behind the scenes at the making of television shows. Audience members co-starred in memorable scenes from such television shows as I Love Lucy, Cheers, The Tonight Show, Gilligan's Island, and the Golden Girls. These audience members would be paired up with the Superstar Television cast and act out their assigned roles on sets or in front of green screens, while the live studio audience would watch the finished tapings air on the screens above. During a popular segment, one lucky audience member would reenact a famous scene from I Love Lucy, in which Lucy and Ethel take on a speeding conveyor belt of chocolates. The guests would take on the role of Ethel. Sadly, Superstar Television, a Hollywood classic, closed on September 26, 1998. Doug Live was a stage show based on Disney's Doug, an animated television series. The theatrical show opened on March 15, 1999 at the newly retitled ABC TV Theater. Doug Live was a combination of live action, animation, and it was also a musical. The show closed on May 12, 2001. The American Idol experience was inspired by the popular television series American Idol and opened in early 2009. At this point, the theater was renamed back to the Superstar Television Theater once again. Guests auditioned in front of a casting director, then went through several elimination rounds before making it to the final three. These three guests got to perform their song in front of the entire studio audience on the main theater stage. Then, each studio audience member got to vote from their seat using a touchpad. The contest winner of the day received a dream ticket. This dream ticket allowed the contestant to skip the line at a regional audition for the real American Idol. The American Idol experience closed during the summer of 2014 thus ending the reign of television theme attractions here in this show building. For the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration is a stage show that opened on July 5th, 2014. You'll melt for this heartwarming celebration with a flurry of stories and songs from the Frozen film with exciting sing-alongs. The theater was also renamed to Hyperion Theater and this stage show currently occupies the original Superstar Television's building. Have a picture-perfect day here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now it's time for a Disney's Hollywood Studios flashback. Here we are, near Echo Lake, but sadly, our journey's come to an end. With that said, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram and Patreon. Until next time, see you later, explorers.